In this video, I'm gonna go over how you can get the biggest tax refund of 2023 and how you can ensure that you're getting every dollar back from Uncle Sam that you deserve with these tax refund tips. So let's jump right into this. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chase and this is a Painting Pinterest Guide to Personal Finance. If you do like this video, then go ahead and consider subscribing and liking it and maybe looking into some other videos that we do have on our channel. But we'll jump right into these tips and tricks. All right, so the first tip that I wanna talk about is ensuring that you're filing in the correct status. Filing the correct status will determine the particular standard deduction and the particular threshold that you may be able to take advantage of if you're doing an itemized deduction along with the credits. So the status you use could significantly affect the amount of refund that you can qualify for. So for example, a person could file as a widower for the two years following their spouse's death. And with this particular filing status, it nearly doubles the amount of deduction for the standard deduction that you can apply compared to a single filing status. Another option is for married couples where they can decide if they want to file jointly or separately. Almost always it'll be better for a married couple to file jointly. Only in rare cases will married couples be having some sort of benefit if they were to file separately. For example, if one side of the family or one spouse is going to be having multiple medical expenses, then that may meet the threshold for itemizing in a separate joint filing tax status. All right, so the next one that I'm going to talk about is not overlooking the dependent care expenses. If you do claim children on your tax return, you will receive a $2,000 tax credit for every child that is under 17 years old. In addition to this, you can also receive a tax credit associated with the amount of costs for daycare associated with these kids. So for this particular credit, it will depend on your income and it will depend on the number of children that you're trying to claim. But if you do have a single child, you can claim up to 35% of $3,000 spent on childcare costs. And if you do have more than one kid, then you can claim up to $6,000 for childcare costs. Qualifying expenses can be daycare, before and after school programs, could be a summer day camps or even sports camps. The only caveat associated with this particular deduction and credit is that it will have to be a particular daycare that is allowing you to go back to work and to accomplish your income. Well, the majority of people will claim this credit associated with 12 years and younger children. You can also claim it for other disabled adults or even with elderly parents. All right, so the next one is going to be itemizing your deduction whenever possible. Now the Tax Cut and Job Acts of 27 significantly increase the de total deduction for the standard deduction to the point where most people don't really itemize anymore. However, if you do have a significant amount of charitable contributions or medical expenses, then it may be worth calculating those up to see if the itemized deduction is better than the standardized deduction. And after you do those calculations, if you're still not meeting that standard deduction threshold, then you might want to consider changing your spending habits. That way you can start utilizing the itemized deduction. For example, the most common way that you can start itemizing is by bunching a bunch of charitable donations all into a single year and then using those to distribute them over the next few tax returns. And the way to do this is to use a donor advised fund account. That way you can meet this criteria. Basically, you create a donor advised funding account and then you can make a large initial deposit for a charitable giving and then that deposit can be itemized on tax returns, but then the funds can be distributed to charities over periods of years. All right, the next one is gonna be contribute to a traditional IRA. Retirement funds are a prime way to save money on your taxes. Now, while it is too late to be funding your workplace 401k, you can still be contributing to your traditional IRA up until the tax deadline, which is April 18th of 2023. Now, if you're younger than 50 years, then you can contribute to your traditional IRA up to $6,000 in the tax year of 2022. If you are older than 50 years old, then you can contribute up to $7,000 into your IRA. Now, one thing I do wanna make sure that you are aware of is that you should be contributing to your traditional IRA because if you're you are contributing to your Roth IRA, then those are non-taxable. And although these IRAs have their own set tax benefits, you will not be able to make tax deductions for your refund this year. Also of note, if you do have a workplace retirement plan such as a 401k, the ability to deduct the IRA contributions begins to phase out for single and head of household filers once their contribution is modified adjust gross income reaches $68,000. Now on the other hand, for married and filing jointly or for widowers filing status, you are able to have a full IRA contribution deduction, which is only available with those earnings of $109,000 or less. 
All right, the next one is gonna be making sure that you max out your contributions to any health savings accounts. If you have the ability and you qualify for it, then you can go ahead and have a qualifying high deductible health insurance plan. Then you can save on your taxes by contributing to a health savings account. Now these accounts do allow people to put money away for medical expenses and they do come along with a triple tax savings with them. Now when you do put away, these contributions will be tax deductible. The money that grows in these accounts will then be grow tax free and the withdrawals are tax exempt when they're used for qualifying medical expenses. Now, similar to the traditional IRA, you can contribute to these up until April 18th of 2023. Now, for the 2022 tax year, if you do have a health savings account and you qualify and you contribute, you can contribute up to $7,300 per year and make that deductible on your taxes. If you are filing single, then you can deduct up to $3,650 for that particular year. And then if you are 55 years or more, you can add an additional $1,000 to the previous numbers that we just talked about. All right, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is making sure that you claim credits associated with your energy efficiency home improvements. Now, thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, you may be entitled to a tax break due to your improvements that have increased your home energy efficiency. So this tax credit is associated with those people that have made energy efficient upgrades such as new windows, exterior doors, or added insulation to their home, which will allow them to claim up to $500 on the spring's tax return. And if these do pertain to you, then I would make sure that you look into your particular tax bracket and ensure that you're getting these tax credits. All right, and then the next one that I'm gonna talk about is making sure that you either get a tax accountant or getting a fresh eyes look at your tax return. If you've been using the same tax professional for years, it might be time for you to get a fresh set of eyes to look over that return. After many years, a tax accountant might be a little bit complacent uh, and they've used the same client's return a certain way and they might not be proactively looking into new ways to ensure that you're getting all your money back. By reaching out to somebody new or getting a new fresh pair of eyes, they may have a new robust way of looking at your tax return to ensure that you're not missing out on anything. They can even look at past tax returns and amend them and ensure that you can get the most money back. And I've actually heard of people getting thousands of dollars for things that they have missed and, and have applied an amended tax return. Whether you're doing it yourself, you're using an online tax software, or you're using an accountant, just be aware that the tax code does change on a regular basis. And if you're not staying on top of it, you could be missing out on opportunities for savings that may change on a yearly basis. So just by focusing on these particular tax tips and tricks, you can ensure that you're gonna get the biggest tax refund possible for this upcoming year. Hope you got some good information from this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in finding out how to file your taxes for free, then I'll put a link right up here in the corner. And as always, I want to remind you that we are here from your first penny to your first million. We'll see you next time.